Hi, and welcome back to Stop Being Sold. My name is Michelle, and I'm here with Brian. And in this video, we're talking about one of the most controversial tax forms, the pesky 1099K form that you are now required to file if you're using a third-party platform for transactions instead of cash or if you sell goods and services on them. So we had such a good response to our last video. Massive plus, response. Right. Well, yeah. And there's a lot of new information about the $600 rule. So we decided to do a follow-up video and here we are today. So key thing to note, the $600 rule isn't just for businesses and the self-employed. This is also for anyone who is selling personal items such as an old kitchen table or even concert tickets. And the key is the government wants to know every move you make and they're going to make you pay for it. So in this video, we're going to break down each payment platform as it stands right now, explain what's going on and what's required of you when you file your 2023 taxes. And we're going to talk about where we are with some legislation to stop the $600 rule. Yeah. We, you know, Michelle, we did a poll on this a while back and I was surprised how many people yeah. don't know about this IRS rule and what's going to be required of them personally. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be a nasty surprise to many Americans next tax season. Absolutely. It'll be a paperwork documentation nightmare, not to mention double taxation on some goods. Exactly. Um, uh, you know, people selling personal items, you're taxed when you bought that item, right? Yeah. And now you're going to be taxed again when you sell it, yeah. when you no longer need it. But you know, this is funny. They're going to give you a tax break if you donate it though. Right. Well, you know, that the message there is don't make any income, just give all your stuff away, which makes no sense. No sense at all. Right. So anyway, there is some good news. The information in this video will help you know what specific acts require what, and we're going to tell you how to prepare now. So make sure to watch to the end. Yeah. You know, talked about some good news earlier. Uh, really good news is that uh, this is starting to be challenged by more of those uh, app companies right now. Yeah, actually, they put together a coalition and it's called the Coalition for 1099K Fairness. Google it. Uh, it's an, a group of online marketplaces that are opposed to the new rule. And they're urging Congress to have bi get bipartisan legislation in place that would raise the threshold, the $600 threshold, and would give relief. And this is their words, not mine, to the casual sellers, which are the millions of people who are paid smaller amounts through third-party networks who haven't received 1099K forms in the past because until now it was 20,000, right? 20,000, yeah. So the coalition did a survey and not shocking, but they found that 70% of respondents said that they would be deterred from selling online because of this new $600 IRS reporting requirement. And 85% of those who were surveyed didn't think that the IRS should be targeting people who occasionally sell online. Yeah, yeah, this 1099K law is really going to start to hurt a lot of these businesses based yeah. on what you just said there, according to them stats, and then the sellers that actually sell on them sites also. Well, for sure. And the sellers, this is one of the things that the coalition is pointing out, is that, that economic hardship is a big factor for nearly 40, well, big factor in why people sell things online. It's 40% exactly. of online sellers. So economic hardship. Uh, and then the vast majority, which is nearly 75% said that they sell online to help pay for necessary personal expenses. And it's right. going to, it's going to hurt a lot of people. Especially right. with the inflation, the high cost of groceries right. and gas bills, utility bills, whatever it may be, people are, will, will sell more of their stuff online but now this will uh, take it back from them. Also. Absolutely. All right, Brian. So let's get to it. Let's start with a quick definition, very brief of this new $600 99K rule. And then we'll go and break down uh, each app and then talk about legislation. Okay. Uh, form 1099K, also known as the payment card and third party network transactions form. Whew. Fun. It's, it's an IRS information form. Basically it's used to report certain payment transactions to improve voluntary tax compliance. So just remember that. Uh, the 1099K is not new, Michelle. It's been around since 2012 and is a way for banks and credit card companies to report payments to individuals and to the IRS at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, but when Congress passed the American Rescue Plan Act in 2021, it made a little notice change in the tax reporting rules that will make it almost impossible for independent contractors and other businesses to hide their income from the IRS by receiving electronic payments. So much for Biden's promise not to raise the taxes on anyone with under 400,000 of income, right? Right, now they're just gonna squash us. 
Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. We'll move on. Breathing. <laughs> Breathing with so, sure. I mean, the whole it's 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 absolutely amazing to me how many people are going to be affected by this. Millions. Rule. Millions. And, and absolutely millions. But uh, the back to what I'm saying though. The change forced third-party settlement organizations who issue Form 1099-K to report all transactions that total over $600. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, Michelle, third parties are only required to report transactions where gross payments exceed $20,000, and there's no more than 200 transactions. So 1099-K reporting over $600 is in effect starting this year in 2023. Right now. Right Right now. now. And these payments can come from digital apps like PayPal, Cash App, Square, Venmo, Etsy, eBay, Airbnb, Poshmark. The only one that's off the hook right now, Michelle, is Zelle. And we'll talk about that one more in a moment. All right. So as I mentioned in the intro, this this isn't just required for businesses and contractors or gig economy workers. It's for anyone, individuals as well, these people who are selling personal items. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's right. If you you gotta laugh at this. If you pay your neighbor's kid to babysit through PayPal, or you sell a bunch of your grandma's old furniture and take payments by Cash App, you're gonna get a 1099K form and have to pay taxes on those items sold if you make a profit over six hundred dollars. And so what if you don't make a profit? What if you lend your kid money through one of these apps? It's up to you to keep accurate records of what each transaction's for. Only you know if you make a profit, and if you receive a 1099K, you will have to show the numbers to prove your claim. Okay. Let's use your example of selling grandma's old furniture. Let's say I've got grandma, and she's got furniture from 1971. Mm -hmm. I don't have those records, and chances are she doesn't have those records, um, how much these were bought for. So I'm assuming I have to pay taxes on this. Let's say I sold them for $900. I'll have to pay taxes on that $900 if I don't have these records. Okay. This is where you're going to have to keep uh, good, re- great records. Mm-hmm. You'll have to have an estimated value of what it was before you sell it. And then you'll pay taxes on any gains from the value of the day you received it. Let me read something to you real quick. This was from the new IRS guidelines that just came out in March. And just one second while I pull it up here. And we will be putting this link below. So yes, that out. here it is. The gain on the sale of a personal item is taxable. You must report the transaction, the gain on the sale on form 8949 sales and other dispositions of capital assets and on form 1040 under your individual tax return, schedule D capital gains and losses. If you need more information, see publication 551 for a basis of assets for guidance in determining your cost basis. But if you had it, got it for a loss, Michelle, yeah. then you're going um, to have to go to form 1040, schedule one, part one, line eight Z, other income, list the type and the amount for 1099K, sold at a loss, $600, show okay. the of the sales, and then go to form 1040, schedule one, part two, line 24 Z, other adjustments, and then adjust for the loss. So you need a CPA to sell your grandma's freaking couch. Unbelievable. We're going to drop that document uh, below this video for read you this. to read. For Go yourself. check this out. This is, this is unreal. I, the amount of how people are going to get taxed because they what don't. If you sold, what if you sold, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, Michelle, but what if you sold 10 different items for over $600 each and they came from different apps? You get 10 different ones. You got to go through that with every transaction over that $600 limit. Well, and this is why we're doing this video. I mean, this is where we make decisions. Do we just go through one app to make it easier? Right? I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you can prepare. You can stop using these apps. I'm not, I I don't ever want to take business away from anyone, but it's definitely knowing this has changed. I'm not sending money. I'm not doing it. Dramatic changes. Okay. So let's get back on track here. And let's talk about the different apps. So okay. there's been a lot of pushback, as I've mentioned, uh, from financial institutions. And Zelle is actually no longer required to um, report that income of $600. How'd they get out of that one? Yeah, we call it the Zelle's billion dollar tax loophole. Yeah. It, it comes from its unique structure, Michelle. As it's owned by a group of banks, 
And what they, what they do is the app facilitates direct bank to bank transfers between users and it doesn't hold the funds. There's the key. That means like un unlike other payment apps such as Venmo, Pay PayPal, Zelle does not fall under the 1099K reporting rules and thus is not reported to report them business income over $600. And this tax loophole may make it harder for the IRS to track income received through Zelle, similar to cash payments. However, just remember that you're still legally retired, required to report all taxable income, regardless of whether you received a tax form or not. And we're not telling you to go and move all your transactions to the Zelle system. Right. No, absolutely not. I think the thing that is a good point here, the, my just shock about this whole thing is, I mean, you got income right. to report, but it's this grandma couch thing, right? And, and oh, yeah. how much work is now being put on us. Well, they just keep making things more complicated. Okay, I'm done with that rant. So let's talk about Ben. We know Zelle's off the hook. Venmo, right. PayPal, and Cash App, they all still have to report if you're moving money back and forth. Yeah, let's look at what each company states on their actual website. Okay. And uh, you can research all this. on if, if you got a different app than what we're talking about today, just type in the name of your app, 1099k reporting requirements in Google, and it'll tell you exactly what's going on. Okay. So for Cash App for 2022, if you have a business account and receive 600 more in payments in 2023, you mm -hmm. will receive a form 1099k by January 31st of 2024. Okay. Same thing with Venmo. Uh, IRS uses the lower threshold of at least $600. If you collect $600 or more for the sale of goods and services through a payment services company without First, providing your tax info, that payment services company, us, Venmo, is required to withhold 24% of those payments and send it to IRS for backup withholding. Did you hear that with Venmo? This is required by the IRS and helps us ensure that any applicable taxes due on these payments are paid. Okay. So if you collect more than 600 Mm-hmm without first providing your tax information, then they are required to withhold 24% of those payments? Yes, that's Venmo's requirement for this year. Okay. It says the IRS's requirement, but let's stay tuned for that one. Um, <laughs> I, 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 so apparently, um, in, in my opinion, because I use PayPal, and, and PayPal has the same type of requirements, but they're not withholding the 24 right so that that withholding is for venmo specifically yeah and it says without first providing your tax info that means you haven't given them you, your social sure. paypal has my social because it's backed up with my bank account so right. got it okay so, so and that's the difference between these apps that you need to know all right so what about what about paypal yeah um is uh okay same thing with them six hundred dollars um for any certain amounts um, on the form that may be taxable, PayPal is required to report the total gross amount of payments received for goods and services, yeah. which can include amounts from selling personal items at a loss, refunded amounts, and processing fees. So think about what we talked about, the IRS requirements, <laughs> your documentation requirements. Selling the item at a loss, okay, well, you got to know what you paid for it and what you sold it for and be able to deduct them losses on that other forms. But what about any amounts that you refunded to people or what about any processing fees that you paid as an expense to make that money? You got to know all that. I wish that we could do this, uh, our videos with a martini <laughs> make this so much better. Wow, the bar? maybe we should right? just have a bar next time. Right, yeah. <laughs> things like this, like everybody. Woof. All right, so let's move on. Square is another one. Let's talk about yeah. That. Square is required to issue the same thing, ten ninety nine k, and report to the state when six hundred dollars or more is processed in payments. Um, these reporting thresholds are based on the aggregate gross sales volume processed on all accounts using the same tax ID number. So okay. if you're use one tax ID number. Right. 11099k based on the total amount, and it's your job to figure it out at IRS. Mm -hmm. All those fun little form lines. Can't wait. Okay, so let's eBay, Etsy, Poshmark. Like there are a lot more, but we're a just more on these three. 
you know, are three other apps. So Etsy makes sense. You know, a lot of these people are self-employed. It's business. It's like, sure, whatever. Sure. But like eBay and even Poshmark, there are some people who have, you know, when they're selling their clothes, they do, they make a business out of it. But like anybody can just go put an old cashmere sweater on there and sell it. So many of these individuals on those two, eBay, Poshmark, are there to sell old stuff that they may or may not even turn a profit on. Right. Same thing applies. These, these apps will issue a form 1099K and report to the state when $600 or more is processed in card payments. Okay. So when we were talking about Square, you mentioned reporting something to the state. That's not mm -hmm. federal though. So what what's going on there? Do, do state rules trump federal IRS guidelines on this? In addition, like what's... What's up? What's the deal? You yeah. Um, triple tax? Well, you got the IRS guidelines are for federal taxes. Okay. Right. Each state, Michelle, can have their own set of guidelines for their state income taxes. So remember that. Mm -hmm. So you could end up doing all that work for that $600, $601 that you made and on your federal taxes, but your state may also require you to... Um, submit that as income and then also follow their guidelines in your state to see if it's taxable income and whatever process they have uh, as far as that. Wow. What a paperwork nightmare. This is really going to hurt well, average people, but really hurt these low income sellers on the platforms and the platforms themselves. Yeah. I mean, it's just not, it's not a, it's not a win for anyone except for the IRS, even then it's going to be a paperwork nightmare for them. So, I mean, how, I, I, how would you, I mean, now I see why they need 80 some thousand new IRS agents to exactly. be able to audit all this, because this is a lot, Michelle, yeah. this is, this is, uh, I mean, this isn't like it's an automated process. You know, you know what this is? This is called squeezing blood out of a turnip. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little concerned here. Uh, I'm more concerned about the, look, if you make income, Yes, you need to pay your taxes. It's that simple. That's the rule. Everyone pays taxes, right? But if you're selling your old stuff that has already been taxed multiple times already and you made more than $600 and you have to go through this and most people are going to stop selling stuff. It's yep, that simple. Will. Or you go to a cash, cash right. system only. So Yep, absolutely. Well, here's the thing. Let's hope and pray that the Coalition for 1099K Fairness can get Congress to bump up this the six hundred dollar, you know, reporting requirement. Right. What if I? What if you sold your old Rolex? Well, guess what? That's automatically well over six hundred dollars, and you got to trace that all the way through the lines. I mean, okay, so there needs to be a limitation. Um, Absolutely. And Absolutely. the twenty thousand, I didn't even realize how high it was before. Yeah. Previously at twenty thousand. Yeah. Okay, that's a nice threshold. Yeah. But okay, you want to bring it down some, bring it down ten thousand, whatever. But six hundred makes no sense. No, it doesn't. All right. Well, we'll see how this ends fairly soon, hopefully. I mean, or good luck, everyone. How it plays out, right? <laughs> May the force be with you. Um, do check out. We're gonna put a link to the video. Uh, video link below to this this uh, 1099 form IRS update. It's a PDF. Go read it. Share this video. Please share this video. Share that document with anyone you know because we yeah. all need to know. And I have not done my research on this, but at some point we all may need to be calling our Congress people, being like, "Get this passed. That we need this repealed." Yeah. So question number three is question number three on that document on page two. Question number three that talks about selling your individual line. items. Absolutely. All right. If you like the content of this video, hit that like button. Subscribe. Again, share this video and. Go check out that document, please. There you go. Thank you, Brian, for this riveting conversation. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Have a great right. day. Have a good one, everyone. Bye. -bye.